most likely to be a blowout game would be what matchup to you, Tone? Well, I think they're all going to be pretty good games, really. Um, this one, our game was a blowout last time, but I don't expect that. I, I think Green Bay's offensive line is going to be a little healthier. And just like Minnesota did last week, I think the team that gets blown out in that regular season matchup, they do a little homework, figure out what can work. And uh, I think they're going to be four good games. The Steelers situation with uh, Ben Roethlisberger, to have your quarterback with a bad shoulder, Antonio Brown in concussion protocol here, um, can, can you have sort of a limited Ben Roethlisberger with that Steeler offense going against that well, defense? I, I, I think Denver really, I mean, they've got to prepare for Ben Roethlisberger. You don't know if he's going to play, how effective he's going to be. I think the first quarter will be a feeling out process. Who is going to be the quarterback if it is Ben? Can he throw the ball deep? How mobile is he going to be? Is Antonio Brown part of the package? So a lot of, lot of unknowns there. So, um, you know, you just if you're Denver, you don't really know what to prepare for. You've got to look, look at a lot of different things. Um, Seahawks-Panthers. I mean, that, that's a heavyweight matchup. I mean, it feels like it should be for the NFC title. That is going to be an interesting game. Two kind of mirror image teams. Mobile quarterbacks who make big plays moving around, good running game, outstanding defense. You can't turn the ball over. That's going to put you behind the eight ball, but you've got to be aggressive on offense and try to make plays when you can. Uh, that, that's a game I'm, I'm going to be watching and, and with, with a lot of anticipation. We've also talked about the Chiefs a lot this year, that they kind of snuck up on people. Now you look around and you go, okay, they got a good defense. Alex Smith is making plays there. They actually have a passing game. What chance do you give the Chiefs to go in and upset the Patriots? I like where the Chiefs are. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Now, it's difficult to go into Foxborough and win a playoff game. Again, the question marks are with with, uh, the Patriots, though. What kind of health are they in? Do they really have a stable offensive line that can handle that Kansas City defensive pressure? Rob Gronkowski, is he going to be a factor in the game? That's going to be another one, Uh, the Kansas City defense. I'm sure they're going in with a plan to handle Gronkowski, but if it gets, uh, becomes evident that he's 80% or 70%, not a big part of things, then how do you adjust and, and tailor that? What is New England going to try to do? Uh, are they going to try to run the ball and, and try to keep Kansas City off balance that way? Do they feel like they can drop back and throw you know, 35 times against that rush? The last couple of weeks uh, in the regular season, we didn't see that. So uh, that first quarter is going to be interesting as well. Uh, to see what kind of plan Bill Belichick is going to have. What's different about the Packers that, that we saw in, in the game against Washington and maybe we see on Saturday night that we haven't seen in the previous seven or eight weeks? The difference is really pass protection and making some plays on the outside. Everybody for the last two months has played Green Bay the same way. Keep the safeties in the middle of the field, take away the running game and the inside passes to the tight ends and Randall Cobb make them throw the ball outside, and pressure the passer so uh, those guys on the outside don't have a lot of time to run routes. Well, against Washington, they had the one safety early, but after that they got good pass protection. James Jones and Devontae Adams made some plays on the outside. Now, Adams is going to be out. That's going to put a lot of pressure on Jones. But the big difference is some of these offensive linemen are healthy. They played with a backup line against Arizona the first time around. Dwight Freeney and Calais Campbell had a field day, two sack fumble touchdowns, another defensive score. That's what really blew the game open. And if Aaron Rodgers, if he has confidence that he can get protection, I think it's going to be a good game. Now, if the first quarter starts and that rush is around him and he's having to throw fast, uh, it'll be a long day. Tony Dungy from Football Night in America, our game on Saturday night, the Packers and the Cardinals rematch. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, how confident are you that Chip Kelly hiring will be the right fit for San Francisco? I think it'll be good for San Francisco. Everybody looks at this. Well, what's he going to learn? I'm reading articles. He failed in, in Philadelphia. Is he going to learn things? Well, I don't know that 10 wins your first year, 10 wins your second year, and, and missing the playoffs the third year is really what you'd call a failure. There have been a lot of good programs that started that way and, and just didn't he didn't get time to develop it. But I, I think he'll do something special with Colin Kaepernick. I think you're going to see the best of Kaepernick. 
offensively they'll they'll be better they've got some weaponry there um it, it depends on what type of defense he's able to to put out there but i think this they will score points they'll be exciting and and you'll see the colin kaepernick that we saw a couple of years ago i saw a column that uh, talked about chip kelly and uh it says the following uh the coach who trades players without contacting them the coach who superstar acquisition complained to ownership on the flight home from the team's big, biggest victory of the year the coach with the whiff of racial accusations trailing in his wake. What do you make of uh, those comments about Chip Kelly? Um, they all stem from losing more games than you win. Um, if we, we would go back to three years ago when they won their division and they were the toast of the town, I think Chip Kelly was the same person. You didn't hear any of that, though. Um, those, those are things that happen when you lose. And if you win, the same things happen, and they become seen as, as strengths. So, you know, I've known Chip uh, for probably six years now. My son played for him. I don't buy into any of the, the racial stuff. I've just been around him too much and seen too much. And, you know, Chip, it, it, he's not a warm and fuzzy person. Uh, but neither was Chuck Knoll, and, and neither was Bill Walsh, and I, I'm told neither was Vince Lombardi. So <laughs> I don't know that warm and fuzzy is a prerequisite for winning. Uh, all the other things come, come with winning and losing. Uh, if you win, everything's great. If you lose, everything's bad. Yeah, I just don't like Chip as the GM, and he doesn't have to worry about that in San Francisco. I think as a coach, um, he learned a lot in Philadelphia but when, when you're looking at what happened with these players, Andy Reid's players, he got rid of those players. And you can say some of them had uh, personalities that maybe didn't mesh with Chip Kelly. Uh, in San Francisco, is, is uh, Colin Kaepernick going to be his quarterback? Do you see him fitting in? I, think Chip I see that. I, I think Colin Kaepernick is the type of guy that he would like, that, that he'll be able to build around, and he'll be able to utilize his talents. The biggest thing that happened to Philadelphia to me is that – when their quarterbacks became non-runners, that stifles the, the entire offense. And, and the premise behind his offense is you have to defend the quarterback. Now all of a sudden, when you have to defend Kaepernick running again, that offense will, will it's, it's going to produce uh, because that's something that NFL defenses have trouble with. And you can look at Russell Wilson, uh, Cam Newton, Aaron Rodgers. When you have to defend a quarterback who runs, it's different. And I would see their, their offense taken off again. Uh, this just in, uh, Antonio Brown will not play in the Broncos game. So I guess that means Pac-Man Jones uh, is going to apologize now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, he said he would apologize if he wasn't going to play. It's too bad. You know, you hate to see that because when you get to the playoffs, you want to see the best people out there. You want everybody to have an opportunity to succeed. But, but oftentimes that, that is a big difference. Injuries. Um, tell a, a lot of the story and teams that can overcome that and, and counteract that. Pittsburgh has a lot of weaponry. They've got a lot of guys who can make plays, but if Brown doesn't play and Roethlisberger is limited throwing, uh, obviously that is a, a huge dent in the, in the Steelers' offense. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. McLovin has two poll questions, Coach. I'll, I'll uh, let McLovin ask those uh, before I let you go. All right, you ready, I McLovin? can't wait. Okay. Okay, uh, you could have any player on any of the eight teams that are alive, uh, but there are two categories. First, quarterback, and, and then non-quarterback. Uh, quarterback, I'd probably take Cam Newton, the way he's playing and, and what he's doing. Um, he's just been, been special, so I'd take him. And then non-quarterback. Here's some I'm choices. Still, By the way, we have me? choices. We have some choices okay. Oh, here. okay. Yeah, right. so you can have uh, Antonio Brown, Josh Norman, Patrick Peterson, Richard Sherman, Luke Keekley, who's 24, uh, or Gronk. That's the poll option. Wait, are you having them moving forward? For as, this playoffs as, or for building a team oh, going forward? Oh, building a forward. team going forward, oh, okay. yeah. okay. All right, okay. Um, building the team going forward, probably the way the league is, I'd probably take Antonio Brown. I think I'm going to get super production. I'm going to get a guy like Marvin Harrison where I can put him places and the whole defense is going to revolve around stopping him. That's going to help my other players play better. And I see Antonio Brown, unlike Gronk, um, you know, I'm not sure how much longer Gronk goes at that high level. Um, for one game, I'd probably take Gronk. But for pushing forward, 
I'd probably take Antonio Brown and think I'm going to get six or seven years of really, really high production. Good stuff, Tony. Uh, I will see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow, yep. Looking forward to it. Big game. Yep. Tony Dungy, Football Night in America.